Before starting, I'm going to recommend you download and install Audacity, a free audio editing software. You can use any audio editing program, but I find Audacity easier to work with and is readily accessible. Before starting, I'm going to recommend you download For where to find Audacity. weapon audio like fire sounds or magazine removals, you can find free to use with attribution sounds on Game Banana. If you're not worried about potential legal repercussions, you could take audio from other games. If your weapon is semi-auto or only fires one round at a time, you can simply assign your weapon fire sound to the audio source in Unity. If the gun is fully automatic, you'll need to follow these steps. Open Audacity and drag your weapon fire sound into the program to import it. Double click the waveform to select it all and press Ctrl D to duplicate it on a new track. You'll need at least two duplicates. I'm minimizing the first track so the view is organized. Depending on your weapon's cooldown value, you need to move the duplicate tracks to the cooldown interval. My weapon's cooldown is 0.075, so I'll move the first duplicate track to 0.075. If you're bad at math like me, pull out the calculator and add the cooldown value to itself to find the next interval. Hold Ctrl and scroll up the mouse wheel to zoom in on the track. To move the track's position, click and drag the track name to the right of the screen. Move the second duplicate track to the second interval. Using the calculator, find the third interval. Select and highlight everything after that value in the audio tracks and press Ctrl X to cut it. Go to the top of Audacity and click Tracks, Add New. Add a mono or stereo track. I'm only using mono audio, so that's the new track I'm adding. Add three new tracks. Select all the new tracks by clicking the first track and holding Shift to click the last track. Press Ctrl V to paste the cut audio. Repeat the process of cutting everything past the final interval and pasting the cut audio into new tracks. You could do more than just three firing intervals, but I'm keeping it simple for this tutorial. Once you've gotten bored of this process, make sure no audio goes past the last interval. Click File, then Export Audio. Rename it to be your weapon's name, and include Weapon Fire in the name to make it easier to find. For the folder, click Browse to find and select your Unity's Asset folder. I keep my work organized by placing everything inside the folder specifically for my assets I make and use. For the audio format, I recommend using OGG. OGG compresses the audio's file size while still retaining the audio fidelity. It's better than using MP3 format because it will make your overall weapon mod's file size lower, and mod file size also equates the RAM usage in Ravenfield. Click Export once you're done. Back into Unity, select your weapon in the hierarchy. In the audio source, make sure Play on Awake is disabled. Click the circular icon, search and assign your weapon fire audio you just made. Turn the spatial blend slider all the way to the right. This will make your fire audio use 3D space. Now you can adjust from what distances the weapon can be heard from. The distances are the maximum and minimum meters away you can be from the weapon to hear its fire sound. The closer you are to the minimum distance, the louder the audio is. As you approach the maximum distance, the audio is quieter. You can zoom out the view and see the blue sphere representing what the audible range is. Press the play button and try firing the weapon in full auto or single shot. You'll notice the tail reverb of the gun will always play after the last shot you fire. To change it, exit testing mode by clicking the play button again. Go back to your weapon script and scroll down to the sound category. Change the reverb by selecting a different reflection sound. If you're making a stealth weapon, you can set the reflection to none. I'm selecting the rifle large reflection sound to show the difference between rifle small and rifle large. To make audio for reload animations, and even your unholster animation, there's two methods you can follow. The first method is the one I prefer, but will require video editing software. Blender has its own inbuilt video editor. I've not used it before, so I'll link to a tutorial that looks decent. This method is exporting your animation clips as a video file and importing into a video editor to sync the sound effects. The only downside, aside from needing video editing experience, 
is that if you adjust the speed multiplier in your weapon's animation controller, the audio will not be synchronized with the animation. The second method is syncing the audio directly in Unity. It's not as precise and can require more audio clips that you will need to organize, but the audio will sync if you adjust the speed multiplier in the animation controller. Open your weapon's Blender file and go to the Output Properties tab. Go to the Output category and change the folder from TMP to a place where you can find the video once we export it. Make sure the file extensions checkbox is enabled and change the file format to FFmpeg video. Under the encoding category, change the container to MPEG4 and output quality doesn't matter too much. I'm switching to animation tab because it's easier to work with. Press 0 on the number pad to change the camera view. Assign the animation timeline to the start and end of the animation you want to make audio for. Here I'm setting the timeline to make audio for the draw animation. In the window that has the camera view, click the three horizontal lines and select View, Viewport, Render Animation. Blender will open a new window and render everything in the camera view. Once it's done, you can open the file path you assigned the video export to find the newly made animation clip. I'm repeating this render process for the empty reload. Open your video editor of choice and import the animation renders and the weapon foley audio. Drag the video into the timeline and sync your audio with the footage. A way to improve your sound design quality is by including sound effects aside from the gun's mechanical parts. You can include the sound of the player opening a velcro pouch to grab a new magazine, if the animation involves disposing of an empty magazine, have a sound effect of the old magazine hitting the ground. Once you've finished making your audio, export and save it as an audio file and assign your Unity's asset folder. Back in Unity, search for and click on your weapon's FBX file. Go to the animation tab and select the animation clip you made a sound for. Scroll to the events and add a new Play Sound Bank event. For every subsequent Sound Bank event you add, you need to increase the integer value by 1. The integer value determines what audio clip will play once you set up your sound bank. If you're not using a video editor, you'll still follow these sound bank events to add audio to your weapon. This is the second method I described earlier, syncing the audio directly in Unity. Move the animation timeline to see where the corresponding audio you have should play. I want the mag out sound to play at this moment, so I add the sound bank event here, and set the integer to 1. I move the timeline again to when the magazine is inserted and repeat the sound bank event process, increasing the integer value again. I've decided to have the magazine make a sound when it hits the ground, so that's one more of sound bank event I'm adding. When you're done making sound bank events, click apply to save your changes. Select your weapon in the hierarchy and add a new sound bank component. Right click your weapon and add a new audio source. Disable Play on Awake. Now go back to your weapon and drag the audio source we just made into the sound bank's audio source parameter. For the clip number, make it the same amount of sound bank events you have in total. Here's where the integer values are important to keep in mind. The first sound bank event that has an integer zero value will always play the sound in element zero. This will be the audio we made with the video editor. If you didn't make a weapon animation audio with a video editor, then element 0 will be whatever sound bank event has an integer value of 0. Assign the rest of the clips according to their integer values. Once you're finished assigning the clips, click the play button to test the audio.